This is the seventh question of the third logical reasoning drill set over at lawhub.lsac.org. And we're going to read the question stem as we do always first. And it reads, the conclusion of the argument follows logically if which one of the following is assumed. So we know we're looking at an assumption task. And the way that an assumption task works is that you've got to find whatever piece of information is absolutely necessary to believe the conclusion that we're presented on the left-hand side. So we're going to read the paragraph and we're going to highlight the conclusion for easy reference at the end of our reading. Many historians theorize that the achievements of some 17th century scientists not only paved the way for the technological advances of following centuries, but also signaled a profound transformation of thought about nature. We should hopefully know at this point that the opinion of someone else is presented only as a fact. It is not our main conclusion. So we need to continue reading before even considering what our conclusion might be, because what many historians theorize is not going to be the conclusion of this argument. The historians hold that whereas earlier thinkers had considered nature an organic being, these scientists began to think of it in purely mechanical terms. But the belief that there was a radical transformation of this sort did not arise until the 20th century. Thus, the historian's theory is false, is our hopefully rather clear conclusion indicated by the term thus. Now, I don't want to just highlight the historian's theory is false because I need to know what that theory is. So I am going to come back and re-highlight this opening sentence because that tells me what the theory is. But I need to think critically about how this rather obscure and abstract argument gets to that conclusion that the historian's theory is false. And it's really all about this idea that the belief that there was a radical transformation of this sort, meaning that the scientists switched how they thought about nature from being an organic being to purely mechanical structures, didn't arise until the 20th century. And if you've got a more dense, abstract kind of argument such as this, and you can see that there's one piece that's really kind of esoteric and hard to follow that you know is clearly leading to the conclusion, you can use a different color to focus your attention on that piece. And this piece about the belief that there was a radical transformation of this sort not arising until the 20th century is clearly leading to the conclusion almost directly. So we're going to focus on that as we go through our answer choices. Now, just for consistency, I'm going to switch back to the orange so I can highlight reasons to eliminate as we start with choice A. Thank you for watching this explanation video of an official LSAT practice question from lawhub.lsac.org. If you're enjoying the tips that it contains, please consider liking the video, and you can also subscribe to our channel to be alerted when new video explanations are released by my guru. Also, check out the description below because within it, you'll find links to full sets of video explanations for official LSAT prep tests from lawhub.lsac.org as well. But for now, let's get back to this video. Radical transformations in scientific thinking cannot be recognized as such, except in the light of commentary by later generations. Okay, so this is where you have to make sure that you note subtle term shifts. We're talking about this belief that didn't arise until the 20th century. Commentary by later generations. Is that the 20th century? Is that the 18th century? I don't know. And because of that ambiguity, hopefully we can eliminate A almost immediately, immediately if we note that subtle term shift between what's in the paragraph and what's in the choice. Then we've got choice B. No widespread belief that a radical transformation in thought has occurred can arise if no such transformation has actually occur. So again, you've got to note the details here. Widespread belief. Where does it say that this belief is widespread? In fact, it doesn't. So that widespread, very subtle term allows us to eliminate B. And you really want to focus on actions and descriptions, verbs, adjectives, adverbs, for definite reasons to eliminate on harder questions, which number seven here certainly is. Then we've got choice C. No one can participate in a radical transformation of thought about a subject without believing that such a transformation has occurred. And I'm going to just, for really the purposes of this video, highlight the term in yellow, believing. We knew that that was important at the outset. 
So at the very worst, we should be holding on to C, and we don't have that qualifier of widespread that allowed us to eliminate B present here in C either. So we're going to hold on to C, recognizing hopefully as well that we can potentially use the negation test later to determine whether C is in fact a necessary assumption for this conclusion that the historian's theory must be false. So switching back to the orange, choice D, the technological advances that followed from 17th century scientific work did not require that nature be thought of in purely mechanical terms. Okay, so we're talking about this scientific work, but that doesn't have anything to do with the link about the belief of the radical transformation not arising until the 20th century. So the technological advances that followed are not ultimately directly related to this conclusion. And for that reason, we can eliminate choice D is not something that's necessary for the conclusion to hold logically. And then lastly, choice E, the notion that collective human thought can undergo radical transformations is a product of 20th century thinking and was previously unknown. Again, you have to note the terms and collective human thought. What is collective human thought? I got to go try to find that phrasing in the paragraph. And there's nothing about the collective human thought. We're talking about scientists. We're talking about historians. Collective human thought is going to go way too broadly. So we can eliminate choice E as needing additional information. Now, if we come back to choice C and we're to apply the negation test, we know that the technical opposite of no one is basically someone. So I'm going to just switch over to my pink and we're going to read this as someone instead of no one. And if we say someone can participate in a radical transformation of thought about a subject without believing that such a transformation has occurred, well then, just because the belief didn't arise to the 20th century no longer makes the historian's theory false. It directly attacks the evidence that is presented as the link to the conclusion in direct fashion. And so you can see, hopefully, best through that negation, why C is the necessary assumption, understanding that number seven is absolutely one of the higher difficulty kind of assumption questions that you'll engage on the LSAT.